When they say there was no war declared, there is a silent war raging, yeah, to this day, and we need to understand that that is the case. Now, when we talk about these frontier conflicts down there, we need to remember those old people because there's a lot of our people who have never been buried. They're not buried, these people. Yeah? There's bones of our ancestors lying around on the open soil, trampled by sheep and cattle, you know, pissed on and shit on by their cattle, this and sheep and horses, you know, and, and this, this uh, you know, white people would never allow that. No other race would ever allow that, you know. But we sit here and we mourn because we don't have the power to stop them. You know, we're, 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 our energies are exhausted. And, and so if we go out there and we try to go on and we say, C -c we want to fence this off and we talk to the government, the government say, no, that's owned by someone on a per perpetual lease. No, we can't do that there. You have to talk to them and if they say, yeah, and when you meet with them white fellows, they, they pull a gun on you. And then they say, we've got a right to shoot you because you're on our land. On our land, that's what they say, with a gun in their hand. You know? So they're, they're protecting their land with a gun the same way they took it off us. <coughs> Joining with that Anzac march, yeah, it's not a protest by any means, any stretch of the imagination. Anyone who says it's a protest is, is an absolute fool. And they do it for political reasons, yeah? It's to remind people that there is another side of history here, yeah? And whether, whether you've, kill, you've been killed defending your land overseas or whether you've been killed defending your land on, Australia, on Australian soil, you've got to be remembered for fighting for the country. And that's what we, we're doing. Now, even though it's not formalised, the fact is that, you know, for the last seven years now, they've been tolerating it, yeah? And so... This year, um, so in February 2000, I wrote to um, uh, Mr. Robert Dick, the national president of the RSL Club yeah, from the Sovereign Union. And we pointed out there that, you know, we, you know, we, we appreciate the fact that, you know, that, um, um, that we do march and that, you know, we, you know, that we, we, um, we're happy that <coughs> they didn't make a scene or um, cause confrontation. Um, there was only one full yeah. police officer who tried to uh, become a big man and some sort of authority figure. There's one in every crowd, I suppose, um, who messed up one year and upset the balance. We appreciate the fact that, you know, and it's, it's very, emo it's highly emotional for a lot of people. When we march up there and we go, and the fact that the public applauds us for the efforts, I think is an acceptance. It's, it's, a, it's a very grown up, mature way of receiving it. And the best thing I ever heard, you know, in, in those marches one day, about two years ago, there was a man and his daughter walking through, looking at the white fellow, walking through, looking at, you know, the, the signs we have of all, where all the massacres took place. And I heard him say, oh, I see that place there? He said, that's out on grandpa's land. She said, did Grandpa kill him? He said, no, 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 the people. He said, a long time ago. And she said, are they still there? And he said, yeah, they are. And I thought now, you know, that one incident, you know, one thing will make that girl think, yeah? And it also, the fact that the father was brave enough to admit to his daughter that that's on, our, that's on my, our grandfather's land on my dad's land out there where we farm. So I guess there would be some, you know, painstaking sort of self, you know, in investigations of oneself, one's own position to that. But essentially what I've asked for here is that, you know, um, any Australian ambition that focuses on any form of recognition or reconciliation can never be achieved in this country while ever our dead remain unburied, yeah? That's the key here, and we have to bury those people. We want them to help us bury it. And so that's, that's the letter that I wrote to um, um, the president of the RSL, and just informing them that we're going to do it again, and that we were hoping that during the formal sessions of the, rich, of the wreath laying, that they would invite us during the formal sessions of the wreath laying 
Um, but then Dr. Brild Brendan Nelson, as you can see here, uh, he wrote to me in response on the um, uh, 4th of April, and he basically, you know, said that the, con the coordination of the Anzac Day Veterans March is the responsibility of the RSL branch, a RSL ACT branch, and I understand that Mr. Dick will reply to you in relation to that element. That the War Memorial conducts their ceremony and conclude, include wreath-laying components, and it is in this regard that I respond to your request. And then he says, wreath laid, wreaths laid during the national ceremony and determined, are determined by the Memorial's Council and are based on the Commonwealth Order of Precedent. Precedence. In 2005, the Council approved the inclusion of the National President of the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Veterans and Service Association to lay a wreath during the Anzac Day National Ceremony in recognition of the loss and contributions of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Island servicemen and women. All attendees at, to the ceremony are welcome to place wreaths or, or floral tributes at the, um, at the Stone of Remembrance at the conclusion of the National Ceremony. As in previous years, your group would be welcome to do so. However, I advise that this will not be formally announced. Yeah. So it takes people time to move. You know, um, Australia is one of the most conservative countries in the world. And I say their conservatism is ridden with, is, is underpinned by guilt of the fact that they did the wrong thing in this country. And it's pretty hard to overcome guilt. You know, if you're living with it every day of the week and, you know, your government is constantly trying to, trying to work out how do we hide this, how do we please people without having to tell the truth, how do we shut them up, how do we do this. So, you know, this is one of those appeasements, but, but the fact that we now are in correspondence with them and the fact that we're talking to them, um, that we're doing it in, in, in writing now, makes it a little bit more easier for us to function. I have no doubt that somewhere along the line, we will one day um, succeed in, in having a memorial to all those people, all those killings. We have, um, thanks to uh, Jane Morrison and all her research and her work, um, personal work and endeavors, who's worked a lot on this and finding out and the other people who have contributed articles and stories and information about um, deaths and massacres around this country to um, Jane Morrison. She now has a website called Australian Frontier Conflicts. And so you just check that out. You'd be surprised at how many places there are around this country where Aboriginal people have been killed. I encourage other people to sort of do as much as they can to work with their local RSLs and, and convince them that something has to be done. The theme has to be help bury our dead before reconciliation, before recognition. Help us bury our dead. Then we've got something to talk about. But until that happens, we don't have much to talk about at all. Everything else is superficial, artificial, and it won't last because our kids will come back and haunt you in the future.